Hello everybody, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at how to use Apple Configurator 2 to create a blueprint for our iPads. So a blueprint is like a template. You can set up a blueprint um, and you can put on the apps that you want on the iPads and the configuration settings and profiles. The good thing about blueprints is you can set them up completely before you even connect an iPad, making them very versatile. You might choose to have blueprints for staff and blueprints for students. You might even choose a blueprint for one year group or one class and a different blueprint for another year group or class. Either way, this video is going to show you how to set up a basic blueprint. So the first thing we're going to do is log into the volume purchasing store. Now, the good thing about Apple Configurator 2 is that the volume purchasing store is actually integrated into the program. So whereas in Apple Configurator 1, you had to go to the volume purchasing store in your web browser, buy your apps, and then go back into Apple Configurator. Now you can do it all from within Apple Configurator. So I've clicked on store and sign in, and I've added here my Apple ID. Now, very important that you add your volume purchasing ID. Don't add your iTunes ID. You want to be adding the one that you've used in the past to purchase apps or the one that's just been set up to use volume purchasing. Password is here and I sign in. OK, so we're signed in. It may ask you for verification. We can do that at another time. OK, over here it says blueprints. You'll notice at the moment all these other things are greyed out. The first thing we're going to do is create a blueprint. So I click on it and I haven't got any blueprints currently. So the only option is edit, which I click on. So it says here, there are no blueprints. Down at the bottom here, gives you the option to add a new one. We'll click on there and here's our first blueprint. So we're going to give it a name. Now we're just making a generic blueprint for the whole school at the moment. As I said before, you can make different blueprints for different year groups. But let's start off with a generic one. So we'll just call it School Blueprint. And done. That blueprint is now created. And when I click up here, I can see there it is. But we haven't done anything with it yet. So we're going to click on Edit Blueprints. And then we're going to double click on the blueprint itself. OK, so this is the main blueprint screen. And it gives you, as it says up here, on the top left information on this blueprint. It tells me that this blueprint will be applied to any iPad, iPhone or iPod Touch. There are no actions in setup and there are no actions in device. Now, if you were using Apple Configurator 1 and you've migrated your settings across, there may be actions in these boxes. For example, if I click on prepare and follow the steps through, it will add preparing to this blueprint, meaning that whenever I apply this blueprint, the devices will be prepared. Now, I don't want that, so I'm going to get rid of it. Equally, you might want to update devices every time they are applied to this blueprint. So, now I've added update to latest iOS and apps to this blueprint. So every time I apply this blueprint, the devices will be updated. Again, I don't want that. Equally, there's backup. Now, whenever I apply this blueprint, the devices will be backed up. I'm going to keep these options all clear. And when I need to update devices or back them up or prepare them, I'm going to do it manually. This blueprint is a generic whole school blueprint. I'm going to add all of the apps that I've got. But if you were making a blueprint, let's say for a particular year group, you would only add maybe certain apps. OK, on the left here, we're going to click on where it says apps. And it says that there are no apps added to the blueprint as yet, which is right, because we've only just made it. So I click on add apps. Now, here's the important thing. The apps only appear here because I've converted my codes to manage distribution licenses. That means that in Apple Configurator 1, I bought these apps by going to the VPP store, downloading the spreadsheet and so on. Um, now, unless you convert them, they're not going to show up here. Information on changing redeemable codes into managed distribution licenses can be found in the video, Migrating Codes to Licenses. 
Okay, so we're going to add all of the apps to this blueprint because as I say, we're making a generic whole school blueprint. So to select all the apps, simply hold down Command on the keyboard and press A. Command and A and all the apps are selected. Alternatively, if you only want some and not others, you can hold down Command while clicking on the ones that you want. But I want them all, so Command and A and then I click on Add. And it says adding apps to the school blueprints and there you go. All of these apps are the ones applied to this blueprint. So the next stage is we're going to add a profile to our blueprint. And profiles tell the iPads things like Wi-Fi settings and restrictions so that you don't have to keep putting them in manually. To add a profile, I click on Profiles. And as you can see, currently there are no profiles added to this blueprint. To create a new profile, I click on File and New Profile. Now this window will look familiar if you've used Apple Configurator 1. So we'll start by giving our profile a name. School Profile 2016. Put in your organisation details, a brief description mainly to remind yourself in future when you look back of what this profile is, and you can choose Security when this profile can be removed. If you choose with authorization, you'll be asked for a password. Automatically remove the profile? We don't ever want to automatically remove the profile. Next step is restrictions. There are none configured at the moment, so I'm going to click on configure, and in here you will see a long list of restrictions that you can apply to your iPads. Now, you can always come back and add more restrictions or take them away. So don't worry about them doing them all now. But key ones you'll probably want to remove are things like allowing FaceTime, things like stopping students going and buying apps from the App Store, stopping students from allowing arrays or content and settings. And at the top here, under Apps, you can also restrict things like the use of the iTunes Store, Game Center, and in media content, again, you'll want to untick explicit music, podcasts and iTunes, and explicit content. And you may also want to change the settings for TV shows and movies that can be viewed on the iPad. Moving further down, under Wi-Fi, here is where you can put in the name of your Wi-Fi settings, including passwords. So when you've finished editing your profile, click on File, Save, give the file a name, choose where you want to save it, and press Save. So now I'm going to go ahead and add that profile we've just made to our blueprint. So I click on Info here, I'm in School Blueprint, the one we want to add this profile to. I go to Profiles, Add Profile, Browse to where I saved the profile from before, and I add. And now I can see that this blueprint has School Profile attached to it. Now I did mention before that you can go back and edit profiles. Now it's not always immediately obvious how to do this, because when you double click on a profile, nothing happens. To go back and edit a profile, Click on File, click on Open, and open the profile you want to edit, in this case, School Profile. Click on Open, and here you can see we can cha make changes to the profile. Once we're happy with our changes, save, and close. Now just to be sure, I like to add that profile again. So first I'll click on School Profile, I'll press delete on the keyboard and remove. Now I'm sure that the old profile is removed, I'll go ahead and add what I know is the updated one. This way I can be sure I'm not duplicating or making any mistakes when adding profiles and changing them. Okay, so let's recap. I'm going to click on info to show that we've created a blueprint called School Blueprint. It tells us what this blueprint will be applied to, the types of devices, 
And it also tells us that there are no other actions that will take place when we apply this blueprint. Things like prepare, restore, and update I'll cover in the next video. When we click on apps, it tells us that all of these apps will be applied when we apply this blueprint to a device. Finally, in profiles, it tells us that these are the settings that will be applied to the devices when we apply this blueprint. And again, if I'm not happy with those settings, I can go to file, open, and change the settings as I wish. Just make sure you save and replace the profile with the updated one, as I showed you previously. Okay, so I'm going to close that profile and I'm going to click on Blueprints and Exit Blueprints to return to the main screen. Now in the next video, we're going to look at how we prepare devices, how we manage updates and backups.